Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Justifying One-Step Equations. We are going to be using different properties in order to justify solving a one-step equation in this lesson. Let's review some previously learned properties. In our last lesson, we talked about the inverse of property of addition and the inverse property of multiplication. For the inverse property of addition, we know a number plus its opposite will equal zero. So x plus negative x equals zero, or six plus negative six equals zero. For the inverse property of multiplication, we know a number times its reciprocal will equal one. To refresh our memory of a reciprocal, it is just when the numerator and denominator will switch places. So x times one over x equals one is an example, so is three times one third equals one. We're gonna learn how to apply these inverse properties in order to solve equations. Before we can get to that step, we need to introduce four new properties, the equality properties. Equality properties prove that what is done to one side must be done to the other whenever we're solving equations. We'll start by looking at the equality property of addition and the equality property of subtraction. In this case, if a equals b, then a plus c will equal b plus c, which means if you add something to one side and you also add the exact same thing to the other, you are going to keep the equation balanced. So if three equals three, then three plus seven equals three plus seven. We can ask ourselves if this is true by asking, does 10 equal 10? And it does. For the equality property of subtraction, if a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. As long as we take the same thing away from both sides of the equation, which we can look at as like a balance scale, we'll see that the balance will stay equal or the equation will still be equal on both sides. So if nine equals nine, nine minus two will equal nine minus two. So does seven equal seven? Yes, it does. Our last two equality properties are for multiplication and division. It's important to note that when we are talking about multiplication and division, we are never using zero as the number that we multiply or divide by. So if A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. So in this case, if we had eight equals eight and we were deciding to multiply by five on both sides, we would find that 40 is going to be equal to 40. So my equation stays balanced. For division, remember we can use fractions to show division. So if a equals b, then a divided by c equals b divided by c. So if I had six equals six, and I divided both sides by three, then I would ask myself, does two equal two? And it does. Now that we're more familiar with the properties, let's apply these. Here I have an equation given five equals x minus one. I already know that this is um, the equation which I'm just gonna write given for the property because there is no property here. This is just what they started with. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick look at what's happening to my x. My variable is being subtracted by one. I can do the inverse of that in order to make that minus one basically go away because I have minus one plus one. So I know that that's the inverse property of addition. Now, whenever I added one to this side to get rid of this minus one, I had to do it to both sides. And that's going to be showing me the equality property of addition because I added the same thing to both sides. Let's try another example. In this equation, I have x divided by seven equals four. That's given. I'm gonna ask what's happening to x and do the inverse of that. So it's being divided by seven. So I'm gonna use the inverse of multiplication this time. I'm gonna be multiplying by seven on both sides because what I do to one side, I do to the other. And that is going to be the equality property of multiplication. Let's try two more. For this one, I have x plus three equals five, that's given. So what's happening to x? It's being added by three. I can do the inverse of that by subtracting three. So I'm using the inverse of addition 
because a number plus its opposite, which would be the minus three, is going to give me zero here. So I will have just x on this side, and that is the goal. Whenever I subtract three from this side, I have to do it to the other side to keep my equation balanced. And because I use subtraction, that is the equality property of subtraction. For my final problem, I have eight equals four x, which is given. I look to see what's happening to x, and it is being multiplied by four. Just a quick reminder that when I divide by four, or I multiply by one fourth, that is the same thing. So that makes sense that I am basically going to be multiplying this four times one fourth or dividing by four, which is gonna be the inverse of multiplication because there is no inverse of division. So I am multiplying four by its reciprocal one fourth or one times one fourth is the same as divided by four. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I can see that I have divided by four on both sides. So that is the equality property of division. Let's recap our properties real quickly. For our equality of addition, an equation stays balanced if the same number is added to both sides. For subtraction, it stays balanced if the same number is subtracted from both sides. For multiplication, it stays balanced if the same number is multiplied by a non-zero. Remember, we are always multiplying by non-zero. And the same thing for division, equation stays balanced if it is divided by the same non-zero number. Just remember when we're solving for justifying that we use inverse properties first to undo, and then we use equality properties to stay balanced. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other lessons. Until next time.